Hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to turn this into this automatically using LiDAR. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do to map out the white lines is to get the LiDAR. So I'm in Manitoba, and Manitoba has a bit of a LiDAR inventory that is free to download off of the Manitoba Land Initiative. If you just Google Manitoba Land Initiative LiDAR, it'll take you to the Southern Manitoba LiDAR Data Center, and you can download all the DEMs right here. You can download the shapefile for the Manitoba LiDAR Tracker right here. And if you bring that into your map, it'll look like this. If you click on one of the polygons, it'll give you data about the LiDAR for that area. So this one right here that I'm looking at is the Pemina Watershed LiDAR. So if I roll down to Pemina Watershed, I will find the Pemina Watershed LiDAR raster. I can look at it, a GIF of it, and the coverage, and I can download it right here. Going back to the attributes, it'll also give me the cell size. So this is a one meter cell size. Uh, most in Manitoba have one meter. This is good to know. Some have less, some have more. Um, this was acquired in 2019, so it is pretty recent. And then if you download it, your LiDAR will come in. This is for everyone also. If you're new to LiDAR, one of the first things I always do is pretty much always change the statistics and the symbology to dynamic range adjustment. What this means is instead of it just staying exactly as it looks right now as you zoom in and out, now if you zoom in and out, it'll readjust um, so that it'll always have maximum and minimum based off of your view, which is really handy when exploring the map. Also, this is my favorite color scheme um, just because it has such a range of, of colors that it is very defined. So if you don't want to work with the full raster and you want to just focus on a smaller area, um, you can always use the clip raster tool. In order to use the clip raster tool, what you want to do is you just want to create any polygon. Uh, I just call it a clip raster. You can draw it out that you want to work on an area like this. For me, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to clip out this area right here. And then you can use the geoprocessing tool clip raster. Uh, always save your edits. The input raster will be the digital elevation model, the LiDAR. The output extent will be the clip raster. And if I use the input features for clipping geometry and maintain the clipping extent, it'll be the exact size and shape of this rectangle. All right, so the raster has been clipped. So now that we have the area that we're working with, the first thing we have to do is use the fill tool. One thing I should mention is that because you don't have a license to do these tools, you might just have to go onto ArcGIS Online and log in and make sure that you have licenses. You can go in and assign your licenses. By default, none of them are, are assigned to anyone, so you might have to just go in and assign them. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fill tool. Let's go into the fill. Let's select our raster, which is the Pemina LiDAR clip that we used. We're gonna set the Z limit as one. What Z limit is, is how much is gonna fill it up. Now, the problem with not doing a Z limit or putting a higher Z limit, such as if you put five here, that would put a Z limit of five meters. Um, and what that means is there's certain areas where water is just going to build up behind a road. And that'll just, because roads are so much higher, it'll pool up an entire area and it won't be helpful. And it'll look like it's flooding out a certain area. We don't want to do that. Um, I'm looking for, you know, one to two foot wetlands for the most part with this. Right now, you might have your own desires, but if you don't have hydro conditioned LiDAR, you're going to want to set a low Z limit. One is probably a pretty good spot. You might be able to get away with one and a half, two meters. Well, um, and also just check to see your units as well. Um, I know that this is in meters just because I know this is about 500 meters above sea level. Um, just double check to make sure that you are in meters. Um, if you're using some LiDAR that's in feet, you might want to use three or four feet or something like that. Uh, let's create the new layer. All right, so we now have our new fill LiDAR. And what the fill does is it, it actually takes these really low spots and it fills them up, but they're at the spill point. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to minus the filled in area from the original LiDAR. So something like this, you're going to subtract this value from the, the fill value from the original, and you're going to get no change. With the areas and with wetlands, you're gonna get values. So that's what we're gonna to use to, to make wetlands. So the next step is to use the minus tool underneath map. Up there, our raster is going to be the fill, and our raster two is gonna be the original. And we're just gonna create a new layer. Now you can start to see the beginnings of wetlands forming. 
So the next thing we need to do is we have to head over to math again and into the calculator tool. In the process of turning this raster into a polygon, it's gonna lose its decimal places. So what we wanna do is we wanna preserve as much data as possible. We can do this by shifting it from meters into centimeters. So what we can do is we can just pick any single raster variable. We just define a new variable, let's call it X. Uh, and we'll, we'll use the, the shape file. And if we just do X times 100, It'll take all the values, the height differences, and it'll just multiply it by 100, changing the units from meters into centimeters. So let's create that new layer. Now that we've changed the unit into centimeters, we actually have to turn it into an integer. So it'll get rid of those decimal places. We can go ahead into the int tool, select our most recent raster, and hit create new layer. The next part is a little bit optional. What I like to do is I like to aggregate my data. So what aggregate does is it groups pixels together. Now, these pixels are a meter by a meter. So if I take a cell factor of two, it'll take a two meter by two meter area, bring them together. And what we want to do is we want to take the mean. Um, and what that does is because the LiDAR is pretty variable across the landscape, it'll smooth out some of those peaks and valleys and a two meter resolution is great. You could do a, a bigger cell factor of three, four, five. And what that'll just do is, you know, cells of three by three or four by four or five by five. But I just want to use a cell factor of two, so I'm going to use my int calculator minus fill LIDAR, and I'm just going to create a new layer. Next up, we got to head out of raster functions and head into geo processing. To get into geo processing, you just head over to view and open up the geo processing window. Up in the geo processing tab, what we're going to look for is reclassify. So for some reason, when you input the raster first, it changes these values. Uh, and we don't want this. I don't actually know why it does this and what's going on. Uh, just head back, go back into reclassify. We're going to set the parameters for the reclassify, and then we're going to bring in the raster. So the final thing that I've done is no data is no data. Zero to five is no data. So that basically means that any area that's really not a big difference, uh, the shallow edges and any any error is going to end up as no data. Uh, 5 to 20 centimeter difference is going to turn into a class 1. Uh, 20 to 40 is a 2. 40 to 70 is a 3. 70 to 99 is a 4. And 99 plus, I should change this to 500 just to be safe, will be a 5. Um, input your raster most recent one and let's run this all right so now that's complete it looks like there wasn't anything deeper than 99 centimeters i guess that's what happens when you create a limit of one meter uh, but that's okay um, i'm really only interested in one two and a little bit of three as well so that works we'll just make four is four plus um, next thing we want to do is we want to turn this let's go back to geo processing we want to turn this raster and we want to raster to polygon let's input the raster Let's name this properly. Example wetlands. Uh, we don't want to simplify polygons. We probably don't want to create multi-part features. And I don't like setting a limit for the vertices because there's going to be a lot of them. Let's run it. Here we are. We've got our wetlands in polygon form. Let's change the symbology. On example wetlands, we want to be using unique values. And we can change to grid code. What I want to do first is I want to get rid of those gray outlines because I think they're pretty ugly. So let's just get rid of the borders and let's make these a nice blue. There we have it. We got our wetlands mapped out. All right. So the next thing we might want to do just to clean up our data is we want to get rid of a lot of these really small dots. To do that, we are going to head over to the map and select by attributes. We can make it so that the grid code, we, let's say we only want to do the small class ones, grid code equals one. And I would also like to do shape area is less than, let's go less than three pixels, which is the, the 16 here. If we hit apply, it'll select all those small ones. You might get some stuff out in here too, a couple couple rogue pixels you know that's that's thumbed out a loss but it'll clean it up a lot so i'm just going to delete all those all right so here's our finished product 
Now we can see where some of the wetlands are on the landscape. Um, really great tool for trying to find them. You can see that the trees obviously make a lot of noise. One of the other things is what I was talking about earlier is where it backs up on roads. It does back flood. If you had it so, so that it was more than one meter, it would be even more of a back flood area. It would be back flooded even more. This might just be a low spot. Um, but you could also even set the Z limit to something less if you really wanted, um, depending on what your needs are. So yeah, this is how you automatically delineate wetlands. Um, there's a couple other things you can do if you want to do more. Um, but, you know, this is probably a class two, class one, probably a class three right here. It's a great tool for estimating wetlands based off of how deep they really are. Before we go, I would like to mention a couple things. So right here we have a dugout. Um, and because the LIDAR didn't go to the bottom of the dugout, it makes it look like this is, you know, a, a two foot deep dugout when really it is probably several meters deep. Um, so it's only as good as the LIDAR. If it's not hydro conditioned, these roads are going to act as those walls. You could hydro condition it by blowing up these roads, but I know that's a lot of work and a lot of people don't have time. Other things, it doesn't capture wetlands which have been drained, which is either probably a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you need. So if you have a wetland that's drained, like this might have been a pretty good wetland right here before, but because it's drained, the water can drain out um, and it's no longer being captured. Once again, I'll come over to this. This is a big wetland. This is not a huge class one wetland. This is a wetland that was probably wet or heavily vegetated and LIDAR did not do a good well of picking up the bottom of the wetland. Overall, this is a tool largely that can be used for finding those small, untouched class one, class two, class three wetlands. If you liked it, hit that like button um, and subscribe for more videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.